So at this point, we've been through a lot in making our app. And if we do look around, how many do we have? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. We've got 18 people. Maybe a few more coming in late. I think officially enrolled, we've got 21 or 22 people. Uh, and uh, back in September, this class started with with 40 people, maybe 41 people. I think there was a, even people sitting on that non-computer table and even someone here by this printer, as I recall. And then I think I had to turn people away. So out of, let's say, 40 people that started, we still have almost half after three months later. And I think that's a big achievement. With these types of classes here that they're free, uh, this class, you don't get any grades, you don't get any homework, you don't get a certificate. You, but you get something tangible out of it, right? Even if you don't go all the way to release your app, you hopefully have all of this knowledge. And I know people came in with a variety of experience, and I think everyone at every level of experience learned a thing or two. So I'm going to continue to see what I've got here in regards to uh, I published my app and such. And then I'm going to look at other things. I'm going to look at, well, what other alternatives are, are there for us to, to develop uh, an Android app? And then also, I'm going to give it one more college try. Remember there was that one day uh, last month where, we, where I was trying to show you how to do the brand new co command line interface and such. I think I got it working now on this computer, so I'll give that a shot. Uh, although the, the PDF for it all is in the, in the folder, but I'll get back to that. So um, I am going to go open up my email, just FYI here, uh, November 18th. Um, so we had our class on the 18th. Remember, uh, Tuesday the 18th, and then I got this email that same day, nearly 11 p.m., so um, after our class, after I had submitted it, we were in class at least an hour more. And then I got an email that says, Dear Victor, thank you for your recent submission of Campus My SDCE. We have completed the testing of your app and have the following details to share with you. Result, your app will not be made available on some of your targeted devices device where app is available. Oops. Uh, right here. So it gives me this table. You know, it sounds worse than it is. Your app will not be made available on some of your targeted devices. So in my case, it's saying over here, uh, non-Amazon Android, past testing. Kindle Fire XD, past, past, past. There's a lot of passes here. And then there is fail testing, Kindle first generation parse error, higher Android version required. So uh, in my case, remember, or we're all using uh, PouchDB, and what we uh, did was, in order for it to be most compatible, uh, well, in order to avoid possible problems from people not being compatible, we made our, our Android XML file say, remember the Android manifest, we made it say Android 4.0 and up. So that's why it's telling me Kindle first generation fails. It can't run my app, well, which is a bit to be expected, so that's okay. But notice for me, it does show, yeah, it's available on the Fire Phone and the various versions of the Fire Tablet, and then it says at the very top, which I think might be a little more important, non-Amazon Android, which means everything else besides the Amazon stuff, which is you know millions and millions of devices. So in my case, it says that my app is available on all of these devices. recommended, if your app is passed, uh, etc. If you failed, click here. Resolution for many common failure issues can be found in this post. So there's a, there's a blog post there. There's an article that I could go in and perhaps figure out what more uh, happened with my, with my app if it didn't pass. So in my case, um, I don't remember the exact time that I submitted it, but it was probably, let's say, 8 o'clock. By 11 o'clock, it was available. Uh, it was available on Amazon, although I did test it to search it, and I didn't quite find it yet, so it might not have trickled to all aspects of the site yet, the, the search and everything. My app was live. Uh, so I'm going to go into my, to my uh, Amazon App Store. Remember, you can go to developer.amazon.com. Even if your app didn't pass, or you haven't, or you haven't published your app just yet, you should still log back in. <laughs> I'm going to log back into the Amazon store. So 
I've logged in here. I get a quick look at my dashboard. Remember, previously it was still saying it was pending and such. And it's still empty for me here. No one's downloaded it yet. But uh, my app is listed there, and I can uh, also switch over to the apps screen. I can see it there too. Um, current, current version is live. Platform Android and Kindle. Uh, no upcoming version, no in app. I didn't qualify for developer select, but I can read in what that's about. Um, so I'm going to look at my app itself. And here's where I can look at all of the details um, about the app, specifically under reporting. So now that I've got an actual app, I can look under reporting and I can go in here and get a lot of detail about how my app is doing. Um, so it'll tell me down to how many have been sold. Remember, the app is free in all of these uh, territories Amazon in Canada, Amazon in China, in Japan, in France, in Spain, etc. And I would be getting all the detail there and how much I'm making from my app. Now I'm looking for my direct link to my app on the store. So I'm sure somewhere in my dashboard here I have the link to my app live on the store. But I did a search. You can try this too. You can open, uh, you can go to just Amazon.com, open another window and try this. Go to Amazon.com and you can, I searched very specifically here, uh, Campos My SDCE. You, you let me know, but you should see the um, the app that I just submitted, November 18th here. So does anyone see it if you search for it? Yeah. Oh, good. Don't forget to give it five stars. Now let me try this. If um, depending, okay, here we go. Very cool here. So, okay, I'm going to search. You can try this. If you simply search for my SDCE, that's the keyword we, we've used on this app and previous apps, previous students. So I'm searching for there, my SDCE. I'm scrolling down and I'm looking at the date here. So August 15th, that was the previous class. August 13th, August 13th, August 8th. Here you go, November 19th. So Fred's app is right there. Download it and give it five stars. So a student right now in our class here. Anyone else? Let's see. Am I, oh, here we go. Um, Mike's is here too. There's mine. There's Ons. MartyApps.co. So there we go. We've got people in this class that publish their app and it is it is live there. So now you can, you can show your friends and family. Yeah, download my app on Amazon.com. Now you're going to see uh, results from other people, of course, because the, of that keyword. Um, but again, your app is out there, and I talked about how, well, how do you get it noticed? Remember we talked about Google Plus uh, as a way to, do, to generate some marketing. So um, I do recommend you you use Google Plus, log back into it, check it out, uh, use it like I was talking about, take the classes that I offer on uh, 
on, on social media or search engine optimization to be able to find your app because in this case it's a proof of concept but you know I can show I can show my boss this I can say look at this my students created these apps and uh, how many of you would would you say you, you feel even after our experience here how many of you would say you feel that you're still a beginner at this pretty much everyone great so even if you're a beginner you've still gone all the way through and created an app so yes let's say I go back to Eclipse I make a new version I I do the export like we've done previously we can look over here on uh, on my actual app over here I've got add upcoming version so there's a process here that I can fill out I'm gonna check it out actually add upcoming version this will create a new version all right so I can upload you know the latest version of my app go through this process just to check if it's compatible and such and then save it and submit it again and then that'll uh, that'll allow me to then add my latest version and notice here I've also got a release notes so I can tell people well what's what's new what's the incentive for updating now for Amazon I'm not exactly sure if the app up auto updates uh, for for apps released through Google Play they they could the default is that apps auto update if you get them from Google Play Store but people can turn that off because maybe they don't want apps auto updating on their data connection but in any event you'll get a notification actually when I turn on my device I had some Amazon notifications here so Amazon's gonna probably notify you and say there's a new version of this app and once you go through this process then they'll be able to download it and you'll have 2.0 out yes when you upload the new one Override all Mm-hmm. Because it's a newer version. It's it might have newer code, newer features, so it'll override the old one, and then the person just accepts to update it and then it'll uninstall the old one, put the new one in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now does that uh, uh, bring up the issue of uh, the version number in the clips uh, when we're uh, putting things together for the uh, for the manifest? Yes, you should um, I don't have it up at the moment, but yes, remember in a manifest, there's that screen. I should I should load it up. Uh, there's that screen in the manifest that says, what version of a code is this? That's the one that we can increment, one, two, three, four, whatever. So we should, when we make a new version of the app, increment that by another value, two. And um, that also, uh, I don't know if it's exactly required for Amazon, but you should do that for uh, just, you know, compatibility and keeping it all updated. Yes. Well, there's two things, and I'll load it up here. One is one is the the version of the code, which has to be an integer, so one, two, three, four, five. But then there's another there's another version number, which I'll load up here. That one can be yes, yeah, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, whatever you want there. But there one of them does have to increment on whole numbers. I'll just load it up here. Alright, so what I was saying was, remember in our Android manifest file, if, if you have it up, you can take a quick look at it. Uh, so when you edit your Android manifest, let's say uh, a month from now I do want to add more functionality to my app, maybe redesign the interface and such. Uh, and, the, and the Android manifest, the very first lines we get are right there, that's what I'm talking about. The version code is the one that should be a whole number. Um, you can write it there, but it'll probably complain. Uh, so version code 2 and then here I could do my my version uh, to the front facing public as a version 1.2 that could work or I could also do 2.0 and remember this version name this is actually a string so it can be anything it can be you can you can call it you know 2014 point 11 or let's say point 12 point 12 let's say next month's version so you could do that but the version code is the one we're incrementing 
simply like that. That's what shows up somewhere when you're looking at the um, at the actual app. Let's see. Oh, here it is. So I'm looking at my actual app, and then technical details, size of the binary, version 1.0. That's what I have written over here. So that's what's showing to the public. 1.0 developed by. I have, believe I have a privacy policy, so it takes me there. These are the permissions that I'm requiring. Maybe next version, I, I'm going to remove something, so I want to remove the permission. And that's what I would put in those release notes when I'm uh, making my app over here. I've got a section for release notes for for an update, and then I want to go in here and simply start to make bullet points, make a list of what what's been changed. Please describe what changes you've made in this release. Re note, release notes are required for all provided translations. English will be used in all marketplaces where a translation has not been provided. And here's where it says minimum operating system, Android 3.0. That's uh, where people then that they have the older devices cannot download. Oh, it's got my screenshots. So if you do finish the class and you didn't upload your app, uh, it'd be it'd be nice if if uh, you know if you do make your own app, send me an email um, and uh, let me know about it because I always like to see when students do go through the whole process and put their app up on the store. Question. Um, I was searching for how to depublish an app. I couldn't figure out how to do it. Let's see. Go back to apps. Yeah, I'll have to look that up. I don't see right on a very visible screen how to do that, so I'll do a quick search. What's that? What's that? I think the actions is on the far right of that list. Well, I think this is telling you how to remove it from your device, not as a developer. Because what I see on this screen, this little um, drop-down list of items, this is the one we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. <coughs>
Yeah, I'll have to do a little bit more research on that because I don't see it right off the top. I guess related to that is if you uh, made a really grave error, uh, would there be a way to uh, uninstall it from, uh, from devices that have installed? Yeah, that's something to look into also. Grave error, like it erases people's contacts and such. Well, just something that uh, really embarrasses your company or something. Sure. Like that. Yeah, so um, I know that um, I know that Amazon has some of that capability specifically, however, for like uh, books and such. Right. People have bought Kindle books. Uh, I think I remember reading a few years ago. Orwell. Exactly, uh, Orwell's book was was removed from from people's devices. They had it one day, and then suddenly they didn't. So how Orwellian, right? Um, yeah, well, what's happening there is that the publisher had had print rights but didn't have electronic rights hmm. and uh, so that was the reason for yanking it. Hmm. But the fact that they could exactly. uh, was, was scary. Now notice though I believe that only happened to pe on people's Kindles, right? The one where they have the full control of the kill switch perhaps. They might not have, you know, this is not a, this is not a, a Kindle device so they might not have that ability on this type of device. I think, yeah, I think it's the same result that I that I had seen, and I think that's for regular people to remove their app from from their device. Okay, so um, as I said, there's two routes to go here. There's one which is the Amazon uh, developer route to create an app here and publish it here totally for free. It's compatible with Amazon devices and other Android devices. And the other route is, uh, is through Google Play. Basically, everything that we did here applies 99% over to Google Play. It's just the big difference there is you have to pay that $25 developer fee one time. You don't have to keep renewing it. That's nice. That's in contrast with other uh, app stores, perhaps. Um, so for that, because not, you don't really, I didn't ask anyone to to create that account. Uh, I don't I don't exactly need to show it because it's just about the same thing. You have this portal. You upload your app. You fill in your details. You publish your app. Uh, all of the assets that we used here, pretty much you use on Google Play. You've got your various screenshots, app icons, promo icons. Amazon basically copied what was over on Google Play. So if you created anything here, it should be compatible over on Google Play. You do the same thing, you publish it, and then your app will, will be available eventually also on, on um, Google Play. I don't remember how long it took the last time when I published an app there to, for it to show up, but a day at the most. Um, and uh, we saw here with Amazon it took like three hours. So it's it, you could get your app out to the world pretty quickly. Okay, um, if there are no more general questions about this, I want to talk about uh, upgrading our app because remember we were always in the 2.9 version of, of Cordova. Uh, I want to talk about upgrading to the newer versions of it, which requires more command line interface and such. But before we get to that, any, any final questions on this part of things? Yes? Okay, uh, uh, so my Amazon app, uh, and, uh, so that it says pending. What is it? When did you publish your app to Amazon? Um, How long ago? On Tuesday. On Tuesday. It's still pending. Okay, let me go back to my screen over here. Oops. The notice that that's about developer select, which is the same issue that, that they've gone through in certain cases. Sorry, say, say that again, please. Uh, uh, your app did not qualify for developer select. Mine did not uh, as well, and his is not. So it's probably related to screenshot sizes or something like that. Yeah, it could very much be about that. So mine also says pending, uh, apparently here, but I thought a moment ago it said not. Oh, I know, because I'm doing my upcoming version. But um,
the developer select. There's a whole section here that explains exactly what that is. Um, <coughs> take a quick look at it. So most likely yours eventually will go from pending to failed. But that's okay because we didn't go through these extra steps to make sure it passes for that. Uh, so if we read upon this and see what else we need to do, then we would qualify for it. But if you, do, if you don't qualify for it, you can still be out to the public and get your app downloaded. It's just that if you're part of that, it might give you a little bit extra. Yes? So I know this just in the right now, but it was like Amazon services that it includes like mobile apps and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like later on, if you want to make money and like, mm -hmm. you know, like you want to have like you have ads, mm -hmm. you actually have to code space for those ads to be like, how would you like, I haven't gone through that process, so I don't know the full details, but all of their documentation here would, would tell you that. And I sort of assume that you should code your app with that empty amount of space, because if you don't, Maybe it might, you know, push it up and suddenly your aspect ratio is off. Or, uh, or at the worst, the ad is covering a part of your interface, like the back button. So all the documentation is here. They'll tell you exactly how to do it. It's much more involved because you have to create, you know, these various tokens and such. And then you're going to be collecting money from that. So it does require for you to set up your whole social security information and tax ID and all of that. So... You could. You could be starting to monetize your apps, even if you put it out as a free app. You put ads in there and then someone clicks it, uh, intentionally or not, so then you could you be... Never, uh, done the ads no, no, I haven't gone that far. I haven't, uh, but that's the next step, isn't it? You design an app, you want to start monetizing it, even if you don't sell the app itself. You know, you make a cool little utility, put an ad or two in there, you could be making some money off of it. Okay, then so I'm going to switch gears over to talk about the, the latest versions of, of, uh, of Cordova. I'm going to sign out of this.